D2DNY, Real World HVAC Simplified. And now, in this video, I will be installing and setting up this Honeywell Home T4 Pro programmable thermostat. Okay, now this thermostat, guys, it's capable of doing one stage of heating and one stage of cool. Whether you have a conventional system or you have a heat pump, okay? So it's a single stage heat cool thermostat. All right, it's also programmable, <laughs> okay? Now, before I get into the video, if you have not subscribed, please do so right now and um, smash that uh, bell icon so that whenever I upload videos like this, you get it right away, okay? So this video is going to be an in-depth detail, installation, wiring, and setup. It's going right over there. This is where my, I'm going to be installing it or mounting it right here. Here's my wire. So stay tuned for that. Okay. So here's what comes in the box. You got your thermostat. Okay, and um, that's the model TH4110U2005. Okay, that's the model, and then you have a uh, plate plate mount. I'll say this is a plate mount. I guess that's the term for it. Um. This is if you have a, a wide space or a large hole to cover. Maybe if your hold the thermostat is uh, at a large hold, hole on the sheetrock. So you can use that to cover that up. And then here is your uh, thermostat sub base. Now you will take this in the, in the event you have a, you had a large hole to cover. You know from your whole thermostat if you're just replacing standard brand new install then you will install this this piece first and then uh you would uh put this part the sub base on this okay so there's uh three holes here uh, let's drop that but there are three holes in this as you can see one two three three holes and then here you have uh, one two three clips all right so the sub base will just clip perfectly onto those three clip boom just like so okay so you would screw this to the wall and in order, in order to do that you're gonna to have to pop this inside piece out at first. Just pop it out. I'll pop it out and show you what it looks like. And then you just screw this back piece down to the wall and then pop this middle piece back in. And then you can just clip this onto here. Snaps right in. Okay. You got uh, here, you have some mounting screws. Now, these screws, you can see that these screws are just three screws in three plastic anchors. And um, these are for, you know, one, two, three holes. If you're going to use this directly to the wall. And if you're going to use this wall plate, then you just uh, pick, I guess, three of these holes. You can use one, either three. I would say uh, one in the top and then, and then uh, left and right or, right, or right and left. And that's that okay all right also here's a uh, two additional screws here i think these if you got a a uh, uh, electrical box or something these screws looks like that what you'll use that for not quite sure but uh like that any of your manual okay so that's it 
uh, installation guide, user guide, read before installing. So that's what's in the box. Oh, also you get some batteries, right? You get a pair of batteries. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get into the install. Okay. So uh, like I said, this uh, wall plate or back plate, if you have a large hole that you need to cover, you can use this. So you will just, uh, just pop this middle piece out like so. And this is the top. This is the top. This is the bottom. So the single point this is where the, you have the one one clip or hook at the top. And this these two goes to the bottom. So you'd put it like so on the wall, like so. So you install that. Okay. Just like that. So you would uh you know you can put uh, you got three screws. Three screws. So you will put you can put one here, one there, and perhaps one here. Wherever you want to equally distribute it. You got all these holes, right? Um, so make sure you secure that to the wall. Once that is done, then you take this piece and uh, snap it back on. Get one hand, so bear with me. One hand holding the camera. Snap it back into place. Just like that and then this you will take it and you'll put it in the top hook first like that and then you just snap it in okay let me just snap it in and then I'll show you guys what it looks like okay so there it is all right so just remember you have to do it in the same order as I show you here if you want to use that this back plate okay but in this case in my situation I will not be using this back plate right here. I'm going to be installing the sub base directly to the wall. But just so you can see how this is set up. Okay. All right. Okay, so very important to just remember, just remember that you gotta separate these two parts, put this part on the put this piece on the wall first, this side, this side facing up. And then you snap it back in, and then you hook your sub base onto that. Really easy, guys. So as you can see, I have the sub base lined up on the wall exactly, exactly where I'm going to be installing or mounting it. And then I use my uh, little screwdriver to make uh, a little mark, as you can see there, in the three location locations where I'm going to be putting the the yellow those yellow plastic anchors to hold the thermostat in place all right so I'm just going to remove that see the three holes they mark and when I did that I just make sure that I made sure that uh you know it's nice and it's not crooked it's not to the you know it's perfect perfect alignment you know level and then I just uh use my screwdriver to make the the mark Okay, now one thing I didn't show you is that this piece right here in the middle flips down. That's how you get access to the, the hole in the middle right here and the, ter and the terminals to, to, you know, make your connections. So you can see what each terminal is. All right, so this is in like that and you just flip it out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pour, pour those holes out and you don't want to make those holes too big. Uh, I'm going to be using this. Uh, this is a screwdriver I'm using. This is a uh, number one Phillips. Okay. So I'm just going to be sticking it through and making a reasonable size hole. Not too big because the hole has to hold these hankers snug. All right, so you want to start small and then increase in size just so they go in and snug and they're not too loose. So as you can see, I already have one, one of my anchor in place. One of my anchors in place. So you see, I made the, kind of made the hole. Um, just right the screwdriver in the hole until it's widened enough to fit this. 
Again, I said you're better off doing it smaller a little bit. Smaller. Because this, the, this, the tighter they fit, the better. Okay, so you see like that. And then I'm going to put this one. All right, you don't want to make it too big. So you make it, you make, better you go smaller. And then as you try the anchors, if it doesn't go in, then you make it a little bigger. Okay. Okay, so there you go. All three is in place. So now, time for my sub base. Okay. All right. There you go. I'm in. All right. So you also have a little bit of a flexibility, um, about quarter inch to the left or to the right, quarter inch to three of an inch, three of an inch. Um, just in case your leveling is not perfect, you can just loosen these screws, these Phillips, Phillips screws, and um, just you know swivel it a little bit and get your leveling perfect if it's not perfect. All right, so let's get into the wiring. All right, the wiring. Now, before I get into the wiring, if you have not subscribed, please do so right now, and um, uh, smash that bell icon so that when I upload videos like this, the videos like these, you get them right away. Okay, so let's get into the wiring. All right, so I got my wires stripped and ready to go. So in order to connect these wires, all right, all you have to do is uh, just hold it and push it in, just like that. So you see it's secured. Once you stick it in there, it's secured. It, it will also help if you be pressed if you're having trouble, let's just say the wires you're putting in is not, the wires is not, they are not uh, solid. They are stranded. Then you're going to have to just hold down the clip for each wire, you're, whatever wire you're putting in. Hold it down. You know, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, I zoomed. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to just hold it down like so. And uh, push the wire in and then you release it okay but if you're using these solid wires you can just simply push it in all right so let me get all my wires terminated and I'll just go over my setup and the colors I'm using all right stay tuned all right so my wires are completely terminated so wherever you see the uh, shaded portion or the terminal that's gray this is for conventional conventional meaning that you uh, have a heating furnace or you may have a hot water coil in your in your uh, in indoor unit or your air handler or you might have uh, a steam coil or you may have electric heat um like that that's uh uh, conventional okay and um, so yeah you'll put your this is your or this is my cooling I mean <laughs> cooling this is my heating signal or my heating wire right that's W heating and then this is my cooling signal or cooling wire that's Y okay and um, this is my fan which is G and uh, this right here, typically, you will use a black wire here, right? If you have it, if you have a, if you have a black wire, if you have a black wire available, you'll put it here, as opposed to using brown. But because in this case I don't have a black wire available for my C or my common, I'll just use the brown wire. All right. So when I go go to my uh, indoor unit where I'm making my connections. I'm going to put this brown wire on terminal C in my indoor unit. Okay, so again, this is a uh, uh, typically if the wire is available, um, HVAC technicians or pros will have a black wire here. But nonetheless, the wires aren't that important. Just just as long as uh, 
the uh, lettering uh, coordination here matches the lettering coordination in in the actual AC uh, AC unit. Okay, so let me go through again. This is cooling. That's why it's a cooling signal. Uh, this is a G. This is a heating signal. This is your 24 volts common or C. This is your R, which is to our 24 volts hot or our, our power or our, what can I say? Yeah, 24 volts hot. And then this is your heating signal, that's W, heating. Okay, if you, if you have a heat pump system, then you would connect this wire here, this W wire would actually be over here all right so you will you would not need a wire here if you have a heat pump system you will you will put this wire this wire over here all right because this wire will now activate your reverse valve if you are in the north or northeast like say new york you have to activate the o terminal when you're calling for cooling all right, so this wire would bring 24 volts to your reversing valve when you're calling for cooling. Now, when you're calling for heat, then what will happen? Now, this is very tricky. Again, uh, or maybe a little bit, you know, uh, hard to understand if you're not a pro. But um, when you're calling for heating, then the same cooling signal goes and turn the compressor on and your system will blow heat. Because if you have a heat pump, the same compressor that gives you cooling or the unit outside or the outdoor unit or the condensing unit that gives you cooling is the same unit, condensing unit that gives you heat. Okay, so I repeat, if you have a heat pump system, the same um, wire or the same, <laughs> the same wire, the same compressor outside or your outdoor unit that gives you cooling, it gives you heating. So hence the reason why for heating to work, in the, in the heat pump configuration, this is where your compressor has to turn on. However, based on your geographic location, it will, be, it will be determined, do you activate O during the cooling or you activate B during the heating? And when I'm going through this setup, I'm going to show that to you guys. All right, there's, a, there's an option for that in the setup, in the setup menu. Um, also down here, um, if you're just using this thermostat to control, say, um, a, a, a uh, steam radiators or a, or, a, or a hot water boiler or a steam boiler, and you have radiators for heat, and you don't have force, your, your, your heat doesn't come from your, the same vents where your cooling comes from, then what you'll do, you'll have a separate power, or 24 volts power, coming from your boiler, and then you'll push, push this thing down, this little tab, Slide it down like so. And then you'll put the 24 volt that's, that's 24 volts that's coming from your cooling unit. You'll put it over here, an RC. And then the 24 volts that's coming from your boiler or your steam boiler, your hot water boiler, whatever boiler you have, are separate heating source. If it's separate, if it's a separate system that provides provides you heat, you have to put that uh, low voltage signal or, or low voltage power wire from that equipment on the R terminal. But in this case, the same unit that I, same machine or same unit that gives me cooling gives me heating. So you leave this up. I know it's not coming back up. Huh. All right, so I gotta. Here you go. All right, so like that. All right, if you got question regarding this, leave in the comment section. I'll gladly answer them for you, all right? So let's move on into this setup. Close this up, like so. All right, and I'm gonna grab my thermostat. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the batteries in here, even though I have uh, the C wire connected. If you have the C wire connected, like I do right here, then this thermostat can be powered from your heating or cooling equipment, 
right? So you don't need for a battery, no need for batteries. But just for this video, I'm not gonna go turn the power on as yet. The power is currently off on the unit. I'm gonna put the batteries in there so I can show you guys, walk you guys through the setup. Okay, so my batteries are in. And just so you know guys, there is a small plus marked or positive marked in the bottom. So you can, so you have to put the battery in the right orientation. Okay, so it's marked. You gotta look closely in the bottom and you'll see that there's a plus indicator marked in the bottom, imprinted in the bottom. So you gotta put the batteries in the right orientation. Otherwise, this thing will not come on. All right, so let's put this on the wall. Just like that. That sounds satisfying. And if you want to remove it or uninstall it, just pop it off. And if you did a good job, a good job with your anchors, those yellow pieces, plastic pieces, then this thing will be solid. You can just put it on. Just like that. And pop it off. No problems. Now let's see if I if I'm squared. Yeah, that looks pretty level. Is it? Hmm. Perhaps some little bit. Oh, it looks good. Looks good. All right, let's go to the setup. Okay, so in your manuals, there's two manuals that come that came with this thermostat. You have the instruct installation instructions, and then you have the user's guide a user guide so this is just to show you how to set schedules and stuff like that how to use the functions like uh heat cool the modes stuff like that the fan settings um setting the temperatures setting the schedule that's what this one does this manual does but the manual that you'll need for setup is this one here installation instructions and then you will go to this page, installer setup. Okay, you gotta find this page, installer setup. Installer setup. All right. Now the thermostat automatically, once you turn it on for the first time, it's gonna go into the setup menu automatically. And um, if not, if the thermostat say was already already been in use or been in, or been used it's not brand new then to access the installer setup menu you would press the middle key right here right which is the menu key or menu button and the plus key you would press them simultaneously together and then you will then would, that will bring you into the installer setup menu all right so you'll press these two keys right here or buttons simultaneously and it says to do that for about what uh, i think three seconds yeah three seconds all right but let's get into it because it's already already in the menu so i set my year 2021 and you can see it's flashing so i can edit it by adding or subtracting all right, so 2021, hit select, move on. The month is uh, May, so let's do a bit of minus, so there you go. Hit select, and if you ever wanna go back, to see you wanna go back to this, just hit the back button, okay? Go all the way back. All right, so select to move forward. And today is the first, so minus. Saturday. All right. Select that. And do you want a 12 hour clock or do you want a 24 hour clock? All right, so I'm gonna leave it at 12 hours. So I'm gonna go select that in the time. Okay. Select that. And select moves you through. All right. So now we are in the the uh, 
the setup menu where you need to look a reference to the number the small number represents the ISU number and um, I guess IS represents uh, installer setup and I don't know what the U stands for <laughs> but anyways so 120 it's set to 3 and you can see that's the default because it's in bold, it's highlighted or bold. Okay, it says factory default is in is in bold. So that's programmable. So 120, item number 120 is for your programming option. Do you want if you set that option to zero, then it's going to be non-programmable. No program whatsoever, no scheduling. If you set it to two, then you got five days, Monday through Friday, and then you can set the weekend separately and if you are on three is uh, uh five one one so i said that's five days and then the week uh the weekend is just the weekend um all right but you can uh you know select whichever you like and then just go through and when you go into scheduling or programming set schedule You'll see what's available, how many days, and then you can just always come back in the installer setup and just select a different number. So for right now, I'm going to uh, leave this at zero, no programmable, non-programmable. I don't want any scheduling, so I'm going to just make it at zero, hit select. Again, you have all the options there, you can see. So I'll just make mine zero, four. Um, that's a seven-day programmable. Um, I guess you can do independent days with that. Each day, a separate schedule. Again, you can just uh, go through that on your, by your own and, and see which one fits you best. All right, so for this particular option, or for that particular option, let me go back. I chose, I've chosen no schedule, non-programmable. No program whatsoever, just on, off, and on, off. Wherever I put it, it stays. All right, so I'm going to go next. So that's 125 and 125 that's the temperature scale do you want fahrenheit or do you want celsius default is fahrenheit so i'm gonna leave that on, on zero because that's fahrenheit that's what i want all right now we'll select and now my 200 and heating system type so here guys is where you will select if uh, you select one if you have a uh, forced air heat and forced air heat could be a, a furnace, a heating furnace, uh, whether it be gas or oil, or it could be that your hair handler has a uh, hot water coil, heating coil, or a, 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 a steam heating coil, or um, even an electric heater. Okay, so yeah, so for me right here, I'm gonna leave that at one. Now, if you had uh, let's just say you have a, a, a heat pump, whereas I explained what I what the heat pump is, the same unit that gives you cooling, or the same outdoor unit that gives you cooling, gives you heating as well. Then you would select, in this option right here, you will select for 200, you would select option 2, okay? And um, if you have, a, as like I was explaining, between the R and the RC, if you, let's just say you had radiators steam radiators or hot water radiators you know hot water boiler or steam boiler that gives you heat through your radiator then in this case you would select three and if you did that that means simply mean that you'd have you know two 24 volts or two low voltage power coming into your thermostat one from your cooling system and the other from your heating system so for me option one is my setting i have a forced here furnace here gas fired furnace so i'm gonna go to next so that's 205 so 205 is heating equipment type all right is it a standard efficiency and here if you if you're not sure just leave it leave it on the default okay leave it on the default if you're not sure um in my case i have a 96 percent efficiency um gas fired furnace so i'm gonna leave mine on high efficiency because it's high efficiency okay i'm gonna go down to 20. 
So right away, you see that 218 is not available to me because I don't have a, I'm not using reverse involve. I'm not using the whole slash B terminal like I explained. The whole slash B um, would be for heat pump. Now, if you are living, say, in the Northeast, like New York, like where I'm, where I'm at currently, and if you have a heat pump system, that means you'd have selected uh, for option 200, you'd have selected option 2. And then you'd have, here you'd have um, 218 available to you. And then if you're, say, if you're in the Northeast, say New York, then you would select um, option 218 would be zero. So that means that reverse valve or the O slash B terminal will be activated during your cooling. And in the heating, that terminal will be deactivated and the system will blow heat. If you're down south, and then, you know, then you would select um, B so that um, in the uh, uh, cooling mode, the, the, the output for O slash, o slash B will remain deactivated. And um, when you need heat, it would, the, the output will be activated. And so your reverse valve will be activated and you'll get heat. Um, now, if you hook this hook up your system using a heat pump option, and you find that when you put cooling on, it's blowing heat, and when you put heat on, it's blowing cool, or it's just stuck in one mode, you might want to come back in with the installer setup and just change this option. Flip between, you know, zero and one, and just just, just see how it works for you. Okay, so back up, light, light it back up, light up. I am at uh, 220. Cooling stages, obviously, it's only one because this, this is a single stage thermostat. Hopefully, that's what you have if you're using this. And 221, that's on one. What's that? Heating stages slash backup heat. Well, I only have one heating stage. And um, so that's good for me. Uh, let's go down. 300. A system changeover, automatic or manual. Now, this is going to give you an, an additional... Um, option on the mode if you select uh if for 300 you select uh zero then you will only have you're gonna have on the mode you're gonna have cool and heat that's it but if you select um if you select uh one then you're gonna have a, a harder function as well so auto meaning that it will based on the temperature that the thermostat is reading and based on your set point, the system will heat or cool to maintain that temperature. Okay? So without you changing the mode from cool or heat, it will do it automatically. So I'm going to leave that at zero. And 365. Okay. And we on the other page. 365. Compressor cycle rate. Leaving that as default and touching that. Won't be touching that. 370. Um, and all these things, right? Compressor cycle rate, uh, upstage timer, all these things. I would say, and um, just leave that as default. Okay. Um, heating cycle rate, default as well. Not going to change that. Uh, what is it right here? I'm at 387. Getting close towards the end of this video. Um, compressor protection. Um, okay, five minutes is okay. So that's basically meaning that when you turn the um, uh, your thermostat on, if the cooling has just turned off, it, it waits five minutes before the cooling will start. And if you are if you have a heat pump, you will also wait that five minutes before the heating will start as well but if you have a conventional heat conventional conventional heat the heat will start right away so this is a, a delay off timer so let's just say you know someone came on the thermostat and they um lower it to bring the cooling on and then two minutes later the system satisfied and turned off and then someone came back to the thermostat and just lower it again to bring the cooling back on it's going to wait 
um, three minutes because it hadn't been five minutes yet. So it's an anti-short cycle, okay, for your, for your compressor. Leave that at five minutes because uh, bad things can happen if, if this thermostat operated, you know, by the wrong, wrong person, you could ruin your compressor and uh, cost some costly repairs. So leave that at five. So that's 430. That's minimum cool set point. The lowest if you want to limit. If you want to limit how low someone can lower the thermostat, you can, this is where you do it. So I can, I'm going to make this uh, 65. So that means you can't lower the temperature set point in cooling below 65. You can put whatever you want, but that's what it is. It's the limits how low you can go with the dial. <laughs> All right, so next, 431, and that's for this is for the heating. Oh, high, you can go with a dial. So I'm gonna limit this to 82. That's the highest you can go with a dial. All right, you can put it whatever you want. Um, so I'm gonna save that, save that. 435, uh, keyboard lockout, none, no lockout. Okay. Might select 702. Wow, this thing keeps going. Number of filters. This is a filter timer, guys. I'm not interested in that. I'm gonna leave it at zero off. But you can pull, you can set it for one. That would be uh 10 days. Every 10 days it'll remind you to change your filter. That would be annoying. I would say that if you're gonna use that, I would say do it every uh 30 days to remind you to change your filter. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that at zero. I'm not interested in that. 14.10, oh, wait a second, okay, all right, 14.10, clock format, okay, I've already selected 12 earlier, 12 hours, not 24 hours, 14.15, daylight saving time, on or off, as you can see. Zero is off, one is on. So I'm just gonna leave it on. 1420, temperature offset. Now in the event that your thermostat is out of calibration and um, the temperature it's reading, let's just say it's two degrees warmer in your space, your living space, than it is um, two degrees hotter than what the thermostat is reading, then you can just come here and just minus two degrees. And then what's gonna happen, the actual number of the thermostat or what the thermostat reads will match the temperature of your space, of your room. Now, let's just say it was your your, your space temperature was three degrees hot, I mean, uh, cooler than what the thermostat is reading, then you can add two degrees. You can go up to, I think you are, you know, three degrees flexibility, plus three or minus three. So that's how you calibrate your sensor or the thermistor in the thermostat. So here I'm just gonna leave this at zero at default. I'm not gonna add anything, I'm not gonna take anything away. All right, and uh, what's next? All right, so we're done. And I'm gonna hit select once more, and it's gonna save, whew, 66 degrees. So let's just say that last setting, um, if a uh, phone just rang, interrupted me, I will not be editing that out because you know this is real world, real time. Real HVAC. So yeah, so the last to the last um note, let's just say the temperature in, in the space um it felt you know warmer than 66. Then I'll go into that setting and then I'll uh you know do a plus two degrees, right? Or if I feel like it's 68 or maybe even 69, then I'll plus three degrees. And then when I come back to my thermostat, it would read uh, 69, 66 plus 3 to 69. But if it, would, if it felt colder than 66, I can offset this thermistor um, by minus 3 degrees. So then when I come back to my own screen right here, it would show 66. All right, that's the last setting, um, 1420. All right, um, one thing I want to do, let's see if I could get back into the uh, main menu. Main menu, or we access that, you press the middle here, 
So once again, this is how you'll access the menu. Here are the main uh, installer setup menu, right? Am I saying right? Installer. So you'll press the these two keys right here. Hold them for three seconds, and they are your end. So we go select next, and let's say I'm changing that one. And then once you're done, you can just hit home. It's going to save your changes and you're back at home. Now you can go hit the mode button right here. Heat, cool, off. Get the lights off of here because I got lights on the thermostat. Again, eat. And you set whatever temperature you want, like so. Now remember, I've limited the upper set point to 82, so I can't go higher than 82, just like that. That's it. All right. And then, uh, if you want uh, cooling, here you go. And remember, we have limited that to 6 to 5. So you can go down to 6 to 5. And that's the lowest you can go. Okay. And then here's your fan option. On auto. Auto meaning it's going to run whenever the, there's a call for cooling or heating. Um, and on. The fan runs all the time. That's it. All right. Now if you had uh, scheduling, uh, you, you would have that option right here. But there's no scheduling, so you can do the time because that's select no scheduling. You can set your time, hit select, again, you go to 12 hours, and you do next select time over there again. The saving. Oh, what about my date? Oh, okay, let me see right here. If I go here, hit this arrow right here, here's the date. Hit select, and you set your date. Once you're done, you hit home. Or, okay, so you make if you make any changes here, once you hit home, it will save. Well, it should have saved. Well, I didn't really make any changes, but that's how that works. All right, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hadn't subscribed, subscribe. I know this video was long, but it was a uh, it was an in depth um, video. I actually installed the thermostat from start to finish. I, I, I unbox it start to finish and um, so you guys have that so that's why the video the video was so long now it's just 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 say you have only a boiler right you have a, only a boiler so you have no cooling just heating a, a hot water boiler or a steam boiler then in this case you only have those two wires connected okay just those two wires Steam boiler, hot water boiler, stuff like that. Only those two wires. And when you go into your setup, obviously, you will choose. So you will choose at 200, you will choose radiant heat because you're going to have some radiators. Or if it's forced air, you can just choose forced air. It's only heating, right? And then when you get to the next menu, which is uh, stages of Cool, uh, cool stages right here 220 you just select zero right and then on the menu you will only have you won't have a cooling on the mode on the modes you'll have only heat all right so that's it for this video guys if you got question about it leave it in the uh, comment section i'll answer them